What's up, peeps? This is my cousin, Matt. You're like a filmmaker and you're really good at it. Thank you for having this whole setup. Yeah, totally. He had a camera. He uses the same camera that I use, actually. Yeah. This is Thanksgiving Day. We are with our family. We're in our cousin's house and we're in the basement right now. Last what? minute, we're just like, we're having some real talk and we decided let's just record our conversation and see what you guys think. So this is a little background. He was always a very avid YouTube watcher. Mm -hmm. And one of the people you always watched was me. Like yeah. you were always really interested in what I'm doing, what's the next thing I'm gonna do, or like yeah. anything YouTube related. You always were asking me questions. Yeah, about it. I was always interested in how YouTubers were kind of like developing their brands and kind of like the business of YouTube as well as just consuming it as entertainment. And so I've gotten like an interesting look at your life as both a person who's been watching how you're presenting yourself on the internet and also real, you as a real, real person. Life. Yeah, yeah. Do you see a difference? Actually not let like yeah, I mean, when you're like a YouTube personality, everything has to be so extroverted and positive a lot of the time. It's almost like a heightened version of your personality. I think that's common with a lot of YouTubers, Do you think actually. that, like, specifically with me, you notice a heightened version of me online? Yes. Really? I'd say so. I mean, like... But we also don't, we don't, we don't hang, hang out hang all out a lot, the yeah. time. It was interesting to see how you kind of were just, like, swept up into this whole world. I'm sure there's some old PV peeps out there. I remember watching from the, the very beginning very beginning the only thing about YouTube videos yes I edit them yeah but in in the moments of being made as a video yeah. I constantly think I have to talk quicker mm -hmm. and it's always on my mind so I'm like wait this yeah. conversation is going slow and I need to speed it up totally, somehow. totally. it's weird because I think about these little things all the time the moment like a camera goes on though you turn into an actor kind of mm. not in an ingenuine way no it's it's in a way where I'm very conscious of a video yeah being Made. I think one of the reasons we wanted to talk about this, or you want to talk about this for your channel, it's interesting to really get a inside, inside behind the scenes, deep details of yeah. stuff that you guys probably want to know and have interest in or questions about. I don't know if I'll start a series. I guess I'll just make this video, see what happens. I'm calling this video Real Talk because this is Real, real talk. talk. Who knows? Maybe it'll become a thing. <laughs> We were talking about my latest yeah. videos. I won't sound like a therapist, but like, <laughs> <laughs> my parents are both therapists. I'm trying not to channel them too much. Um, you are in an interesting part of your career, I think. It was very much, you knew what you were doing when you were a prank channel. Then it was a vlog channel and you were doing pranks too. But now we're kind of in like the post it's prank like the prank. what am I doing channel, yeah. basically. Like I'm still trying to figure it out and I think you guys are still curious of what is it gonna become and that's the struggle that I actually feel like I have. The kind of content that I would love to be able to put out is doing things that I enjoy doing but having a, a message in it in some way that's positive but at the same time you can't always have a positive message with every single thing yeah. that I end up doing and like, life isn't always positive yeah positive. how could I transform this these types of videos if that's what I want to end up doing mm -hmm. maybe do you want to talk about your experience with Mexico video it was interesting for me to make that most recent Mexico video when I was making it I knew that I wanted to do it in a different way I wanted to enjoy my experience while at the same time creating a video that I could put together without it being super vlog style where I'm holding the camera like the normal vlogs you're used to I wanted it to be different I didn't know how I was gonna make it into the video at the moment and I had a feeling that I wanted it to be in a way that could turn into some sor sort of inspiration I want to put a positive message onto this there was a moment in the video I was doing the voiceovers the guy ate bugs in Mexico and I was like oh there's no way I would ever do that in the very beginning my message was get out of your comfort zone try new things and then, mm -hmm. and then when I got to that point in my voiceover I'm like am I being a hypocrite the hypocrisy of like, and I'm like yeah. but I don't want to be a hypocrite because I still believe in that message but at the same time I don't think I could ever actually try yeah. a bug and that would be me getting out of my comfort zone and trying something new each <clears> individual <throat> video there's always so much more that I mm -hmm. want to share with you guys about that specific video but when will I have time to say these yeah. things without ruining the video or adding too much to it in my mind it's always like how can I do this when I just started thinking while we're talking maybe I would end up doing the real talk thing and give yeah. more details about videos I don't know but there's always more always sometimes you write this stuff in the comments and I'm like oh I have 
wanted to explain that now you, you don't get it because of this or that something as small as me being in Mexico with my friends and not filming them because a lot of them aren't camera friendly I wanted to share that with you in the video but it never felt like an appropriate moment to discuss that so it was weird for me while I was beginning to make the video because I was like it looks like I'm in Mexico by myself. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is weird. I need to somehow explain this. And I, I didn't quite explain it, although I did say I was there for a wedding. But even so, there's always something in each video that I always feel like I want to share more of. Who else besides YouTubers have so much of a struggle to balance their personal life with their professional life? Yeah. It can be intrusive. It was. I don't feel like it's as intrusive anymore. Yeah. Talking about the struggle, you've got friends that you don't want to, like, Always put yeah, on camera yeah. and stuff. I don't know. I, I just think it's interesting. I feel like more so my girlfriends yeah. are less likely to want to be on camera than my guy friend. This is actually another thought that I, I always feel like I want to share with you. Not often, but sometimes people in the comments would say, does she only hang out with guys? And they write stupid things in the comments and it doesn't bother me because I don't let stuff yeah. like that bother me. But no, it's just that guys seem to never care about being on camera, which is great. So I... I'm more likely to film around my guy friends than my girlfriends. I have few girlfriends that are cool with being in the videos. Yeah. I think it's different because girls are always like, what do I look like? Can I see that? Da -da -da. They might want to refilm something and it's to me not authentic because it's recreating a moment that already happened and I don't like doing that. So I tend to steer away from filming with my girlfriends who feel like that. What has your experience been with, you're talking about how you kind of feel pressure to come up with your next thing. Honestly, when I made that Mexican video when I was finished that video mm -hmm. I felt so good little things like music have so much impact mm -hmm. on a video I think and finding music is so hard to find good music that matches the vibe that you want mm -hmm. and I don't always find the right vibe that I imagine but for that Mexico video especially the inspirational music that I had in the beginning and end I felt like it fit perfectly. Just something about it. I remember I was sitting in my house, it was late at night already, and I'm watching the video over and over and I'm editing and like, you know, and I'm very particular about mm -hmm. my videos, like super, super particular, detailed. I try to make things perfect. And it's actually annoys me that I do that mm -hmm. because I spend too much time on each single totally video. But anyway, besides that, I just remember sitting in my office, the lights are down, it was dark and like had just the video on and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to give these messages like, I just had this really good feeling and I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I want to do. If you want to post consistently and grow, it's hard to make stuff that you feel so positive about that's still genuine and inspirational, not just, oh, I want to be promoting good vibes and stuff. I want and make to that be consistent. real. Yeah. Like we were talking about the Valentine's Day video. You could feel it when you, I remember watching that and being like, oh, shit. <laughs> being like, oh sh oh sh but like also it's like, I remember being like proud you created something that really had just such an authentic message that you could feel without words from it because like people knew what was going Thank on. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, that was my first video stepping outside of my comfort zone. I loved it. I loved it so much because for me it was so raw and authentic with such an emotion. Like you said, it was such a strong emotion yeah. that I was portraying with what I was feeling at the time and I knew that it would resonate with a lot of people not just because they watched me but in real life mm -hmm. like the similar situations that they may have gone through at some point in their life. I remember when I made that video I was like I want to do more videos like this. I want to be able to film something else. What I loved was that there was no talking and I was able to have a message that yeah, was so strong visual and I knew people understood it but then I was like how what would I do in another circumstance? That had a specific you story like, but, yeah. I, but in a different story how do you do that strong message with no words? I really mm -hmm. I, I still to this day I don't have an answer because I would have done more videos like yeah. <laughs> like, think about like what it took to get that one video out. That was a hard video. Yeah. I remember I busted my my butt for a long time. In terms of filming, I mean, but, but also I mean like, like all the, like day, yeah, day yeah. and night, day and night, because I wanted to get it up like right before Valentine's yeah. Day. That was such a special video because it was such a true place. And it's hard to be a creator on a platform that values quantity so much. I think. Yes, I don't want to put out crappy videos. Yeah, quality <laughs> well, over yes, quantity. Yes, one hundred percent quality over no. quantity. That's totally respectful. That's good. But that also is hard to grow if you're so focused on being perfect and having like a super powerful... Imagine making a video like that once a week. That'd a super be, powerful video. Yeah, that's... How do you do that? 
I think you need a team. Right. You need to be able to trust people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard for me. I think it is a little bit hard for me to trust people and let them into my personal space. It's tough. It's I'm so, so used to doing it all myself or, mm -hmm. you know, like with Jesse, we did it all together ourselves. Yeah. Once you build something and you know all the formats of each specific thing, mm -hmm. like the filming, the editing, the uploading, the sharing it, mm -hmm. everything. There's so many little things involved with it. It's hard to imagine of letting go of any piece of that when you're so used to you being the one. What was it like to have that shift from being like, let's do some videos every now and then to like, let's have this machine that is pumping out consistent content? You mean like, how did we start doing daily vlogs? Yeah. That shift happened with the audience. Like you guys were asking for more of our lives. I think we uploaded a couple of vlogs on the prank channel. People liked it, but they didn't like it because it was on the prank mm -hmm. channel and they wanted only pranks. So we made the vlog channel, then started uploading vlogs mm -hmm. and People freaking loved it. You can just tell when you watch the videos, like we're very real and authentic. I'm not saying this to hype mm -hmm. myself up. It's just like, that's the truth. I'm not fake. Jesse wasn't fake on the videos. Sometimes we would hype up our energy a little bit for fun, mm -hmm. but not not in a way where we did things inauthentic. Yeah. How do you say that? Oh, no. Inauthentically. Inauthentically. But <laughs> uh -huh. so that's how that started. It was yeah. more the demand from the audience, and we got we got very wrapped up in that world. Yeah. And I think it was a dangerous thing to be wrapped totally. up in. I still can't believe if you haven't tried daily vlogging, it is tough. Oh yeah, you to, tried it, didn't you? I tried it. It was a rough three days. <laughs> three days. Um, <laughs> No, but it's so it's so hard to like go and film and have that balance with the life you're living and still enjoy everything and not mm -hmm. be so focused on viewing the whole world through the camera. You and a few others were the, the trial run for those first daily vlog things. Mm -hmm. In those first vlogs, when you're first trying to do that, what was that like? Carrying a camera in public was that is of. That was always awkward. Like yeah. even, even now, it still feels awkward. Maybe a little less because the world is so used to having a phone in, in their face. In New York face. City, you see that every now and then. It's not yeah. as weird, but that was always an uncomfortable feeling, believe it or not. I, even as a daily vlogger, that was uncomfortable. Yeah. How did it feel to like be one of the first daily vlogging oh, to people? Oh, to be like, it was cool. I was having a conversation with my friend recently, yeah. which was like so crazy to think about. In a sense, I would say not just me, but me and like maybe four other vlogging channels. We kind of pioneered vlogging in a sense. Mm -hmm. There were some YouTubers before us, but I would say there was about four, maybe four channels. And, and it, it's so strange to know that that became such a big thing and now it's a bigger thing. Yeah. It's a totally and then different Snapchat thing now. became a thing with everybody in the world filming themselves to then Instagram and Insta I stories. Didn't think about that. I thought about this the other day and I'm like, it bothers, what really bothers me is yeah. I feel a tiny sense of responsibility for that, but I hate it. I hate it so much because I think people are so consumed <clears throat> in their phones and like filming things or being conscious of like what everything is being done in everybody else's life at every moment. Yeah. And it's not healthy. And then I thought more about it, like, I wish this would stop one day. This needs to freaking end. It's not good for people. It's like, totally. I think it's ruining people's mental health in a sense. Everybody. And then I'm like, yeah. did I? start this not start it but like did 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 i have a contribution to like uh -huh. the way life formed in this way yeah and i didn't think about it's that it's really scary does that make sense totally everybody is presenting their own audience of at least like their friends yeah they're creating content even if it's only a few people people like plan their weekends to go get an instagram picture or to yes. go film and in people someplace. go out to film yep and you can tell they're not having fun they're just filming and then when they turn their camera off, they're, they like stop whatever the fake moment was that uh -huh. they filmed. Like dancing, like ah, and then they're, they're like, okay, the phone's down. <laughs> so, like, let's do just... a boomerang. Come on, let's get this right. <laughs> no, yeah. like I feel a tiny bit, obviously not responsible mm -hmm. enough because I didn't create these apps. Something in the world was going on to let that happen yeah, because like the everybody popularity started at the same time. In terms of like the technology and YouTube as a platform to present yourself to everybody, all these conditions met that allowed a bunch of different people to start daily vlogging at the same time and you were a part of that. I think it was uncontrollable. We were headed here. But guys, really quickly, if you are enjoying this type of conversation and this content, leave a thumbs up and give me some feedback. Write something in the comments so I know Actually, tell me what you think about it. You could tell me positive, negative, whatever your thoughts are. Maybe I'll make this a thing yeah. that could have these conversations. Maybe they'll be long, short, I don't know. And what topics would you want to hear about? I guess this is something, I don't know if this is actually the contributor of it, but I think that vlogging 
really screwed up my memory. Interesting. There were times if I lost something or couldn't find it, I would go you look back. At your old I would go back on the vlog and be like, That's "Where so did funny. I put my shirt?" Oh, oh, That's it's really it's, convenient. It's in the background oh on the God. chair. Okay, I know where my shirt is. Like something stupid like that. Just just an example. But I think that vlogging really messed up my memory. Interesting. It's so weird. It's just because you're in like a. I think the cycle of vlogging and it being so consistent. Maybe my I don't know. Just had my mind constantly going. Yeah. You don't have too much time to reflect and look back, except for on the very previous day, because we're watching the previous day as we edit. I can't it's imagine really what weird. it was like. We were talking about kind of how you felt worried. You felt like with collaborating and stuff, you felt that because your views weren't as high and you weren't reaching as many people as you used to, that like you can't reach the same people as before. As far and you as were collaborating. As far as collaborating, but you also just said you felt worried for your channel. You're a little worried about staying relevant in the community, and collaborating is one way to go about reaching new audiences. Yeah. Like obviously you guys know the channel it's not getting as many views as it used to get and that's understandable for many different reasons like yes it's not what you guys used to watch I think the algorithm has so much to do with it yeah. too YouTube is not sharing the videos the way that they used to all of the subscribers are not being notified and I know this because you guys tell me like oh, I didn't get I didn't see this in my sub box or mm -hmm. I didn't get notified it's just the way things are now it's the way so they do crazy it. It, how it powerful like you think you're being guided towards what you're interested in but really there's this whole system that <laughs> has so much power as far as collaborating with people mm -hmm. for one i live on the east coast so there's not as many youtubers out there and two i do sometimes feel like people might not want to collaborate with me anymore whereas they would have in the past, you know, you usually you would collab with someone who has similar views as you, or if you genuinely like them or their content, then you don't care no matter what. I guess I get deterred to even ask people sometimes. I'm like, eh, they probably wouldn't want to collab with me. And I know that a lot of YouTubers go through this feeling, depending on what's happening with their channel. What's it like when you meet up for a collab? Is there a sense of friends or business partners? Both. Um, it depends how, how well you already know the person. There have been times that I collaborated with people and I met them right then and there. They're super cool and we just like, kick it off it's good and then other times I already know the person and I'm friendly with them so like that's fine I'm trying to think of a time when it was like Casper Lee <laughs> he's cool no I was cool with him he's friends uh -huh. we're friendly I don't think I had a bad experience collabing um, but if you guys want to see me collab with someone specific write it in the comments who maybe tweet at them or, or write to them somehow let them know also collabing nowadays what would you even do as a collab that's like what do you do you watch collab videos challenge. still no <laughs> do you still watch collab videos or not so that was much? a little 2013 yeah exactly collab videos are different you gotta now. like, like do what something are, cool what are they you're not gonna do challenge like yeah. it's rare to see challenge videos now bring it back i know Old but school. it just feel, no, it it feels it feels <laughs> like that's the thing like i want to collab with people but you have to have an idea too you can't just be hey, let's collab and no idea like you kind of have to present something what about traveling i would love to that'd be cool if you're saying you want to do things where it's like pushing yourself mm -hmm. maybe if you had a whole week lined up i'm trying to think what you haven't done you've done skydiving right i've done a lot of things okay. yeah i've done skydiving bungee jumping yeah. You gotta push it more extreme now. Yeah, what else is there? I want to try to get out of my own comfort zone mm -hmm. some and do different things that are like fun or extravagant, almost like bucket list stuff. Yeah. I want to do that badly. Yeah. Maybe I should the... make a bucket list Ooh. that I share with you guys and then we'll just like cross them off. That'd I don't be know. Cool. I, I thought, cool I, I did think about that before. Mm -hmm. I've thought about it. Like, one thing I really want to do, I've always, this is like, they're not huge things, but I've always mm -hmm. wanted to swim with dolphins. I never have done that yet. I always wanted to touch, meet, cuddle, anything with okay. a tiger. Like, I, that's such a dream of mine. I need Touch meat, I, cuddle with a tiger. Like anything, like like I wanna I wanna <laughs> Those experience are two things. any I like I wanna pet a tiger. I wanna like I just wanna be uh -huh. in a moment with a tiger. Like I I need that. That's I, cool. I have such a strong desire for that. That's such a cool thing. I think you could come up with a whole list. Did you ever see those like hotels that are made out of ice? Almost like yeah. an igloo? I wanna go to some kind of like ice place ice hotels something i mean yeah. that would be cold but i know but because i hate being cold uh -huh. but something like that would be so cool. yeah i feel like that's very enticing should i do that the whole series right there cross them off because that could be content i think we all want to do cool things like that you guys can give feedback on these ideas too like if you like them maybe throw more ideas into it i love listening to what you guys have to say in the comments because you're a big part of the video you know and i i listen to you and i take your advice well thank that's you that's been some real talk <laughs> yeah real talk thank Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Matt. Isn't he such a handsome guy, my little cousin? Ladies, he's single. Are you single? I'm single right now.
right yeah. now. Right now. Not for long, because one of you are going to sweep him up. Oh my god. He's a good guy. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. I love you. Peace. On the streets. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notifications so you'll know every time I upload a video.